banks are thought to be the safest place to keep the money. But did you know that banks profit every time you spend, save or borrow? Moreover, because of the complexity of the financial system, banks engage in some unusual practices that you are unaware of. We're not saying that using banks is a bad idea. We're saying that there are some truths and facts about money that banks don't want you to know. So in today's video, we will unveil the best facts you don't know about banks. So watch the video till the end to know them. And if you enjoy such content, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notification bell icon to never miss another upload of ours. Here we begin. Check your account frequently and remember that you are being watched. Your bank account is an important part of your life, so don't neglect to check it regularly. There could be some hidden charges that you are unaware of. If you notice a charge and report it within 90 days, the bank is required by law to return the money within 48 hours. Moreover, banks keep track of all your financial transactions and can report any suspicious financial activity to HMRC. So be aware that whatever you do with your money is being watched. Every year, you lose money. You've probably heard that banks are the best places to keep your money, but no one told you that you're losing money yearly. This is not about the charges you incur when you spend your money. Instead, this is related to inflation. Inflation is the gradual increase in the price of goods and services. What this means is that what you could buy with a 20 pound note this year will be much more expensive next year and in the future. You would expect the value of your money to remain constant over time, but this does not occur. Every investor wishes to keep up with inflation, but this is not the case. Most banks are not robbed as much as the average person believes. Yes, we have heard of people being held up and stuffed in the vault, and yes, it can happen. But all banks and credit unions have incredible security, and we are taught exactly how to prevent it and what to do in each situation. For example, tellers do certain things when they are being robbed to immediately alert the police. We know when and where it's most likely to occur, what most robbers do or how they act, and how to catch them while they're still inside the bank. The training is horribly boring and extensive, and there are tests you must pass before you can even get on the floor. We would say that anyone who robs a bank is just looking for an easy way to go to jail. Banks profit from your credit card transactions. Banks profit from processing fees every time you use your credit card or debit card to make a purchase. This may go unnoticed because the merchant pays the fees. However, because the merchant does not want to be short, he or she would have included this in the sale price. Banks can also profit from credit cards. You don't realize that credit card interest rates are constantly rising. The average credit card interest is 17%, but your bank can raise it to 18% or 19 They can do this while also serving you with a 30-day notice. Often you do not read the letter sent with the financial jargon and you ignore it, allowing the bank to profit from you. Compounding credit card interest will work against you and put you in a difficult financial situation. Governments raise taxes, collect less money, and governments lower taxes collect more money. How can governments increase taxes while collecting less money? According to the Laffer curve, when people are threatened with higher taxes, they have a greater incentive to spend more time minimizing or even illegally avoiding taxes. When you only have to pay about 17% of your income in taxes in Hong Kong, there is little point in avoiding or even minimizing taxes. So instead, you simply pay them because it is simple and straightforward. The bankers are not on your side. I'm sure you thought they were your best friends by this point. They are constantly calling you and remembering your birthday. The truth is that these people are uninterested in you. They're just acting out a well-rehearsed script, waiting for the right moment to strike. Bankers are only concerned with numbers. They are given targets by their managers and supervisors, and if they fail to meet them, they will be fired. Never allow yourself to be emotionally blackmailed by a phony friendship. Remember from number one that you must sell to keep your job. That's exactly how they do it. You become a customer's friend, gain their trust, make them feel like you're on their side rather than the banks. And then bam, you've been tucked into a $20,000 line of credit that you had no intention of applying for. 
but they are the experts and you trust them, so you do it. They treat a lot of people like that, believe us, it is their responsibility. That is how both banks and credit unions sell. We will admit that credit unions are more concerned than banks, but it is always about the American dollar. It's always about money, in every profession, on every continent. Perhaps you have a wonderful banker friend who would never sell you something you don't require. Unfortunately, those tellers uh, don't last long. They don't generate enough sales and they're thus discarded and replaced once management discovers this. Taxes are getting higher, harder to escape, with harsher punishment. Why are taxes being raised? Simply put, the alternatives are worse. As politicians become more desperate to keep the status quo, massive governments and generous pensions, there are traditionally three ways to rebalance the budget in the long run. Even if politicians could muster the courage to be frugal when creating a budget, they have little incentive to do so because they are extremely unpopular with the masses who want handouts. Quantitative easing is essentially a central banker attempting to fill a balloon, the global economy with hot air, fiat currency that has a huge hole in it, debt, inflation, the higher taxes. The third way a government will continue its insane spending is to impose higher taxes. The issue at hand is known as the Laffer Curve, and it is an economic phenomenon that causes the following to occur. Do not fall victim to a phishing scheme. Bank phishing scams involve receiving a phone call, email, or text message stating that your bank account is overdrawn or that you must log in immediately. You click on their link, they track your information, they get your login information, and you're, well, you're in a boat without a paddle. If you receive such an email, log into your bank's mainframe site using another browser. This ensures that no personal information is tracked. Your bank money is not physical. You could have a lot of money in the bank, but these are just numbers. This is because banks use your money to conduct business. These funds are put to use in the form of business loans and mortgages. So your money is not physically in the bank, but used to make more money for the bank. Banks have your money in liquid form, but it is not physically present because of a policy known as fractional reserve banking. Is this saying that banks aren't the best place to keep your money? Insurance and the government protect the banks. Keep in mind that your money is busy making more money. This time is for your bank, not you. Capital controls are being introduced. As governments become more desperate to protect their economy and currency, they may impose harsh capital controls. What exactly is a capital control? It is a government law, order, or measure that restricts the free movement of capital, and we see them implemented in various ways worldwide. Take for example the Chinese RMB. Because the currency is so difficult to exchange and people are afraid of losing value, Countless people with full-time jobs are running backpacks full of RMB notes. The largest denomination is about $20 between the mainland and Hong Kong. Recent rules in Greece and Spain have also emerged that prevent capital outflows, limiting residents to withdraw only a few hundred dollars daily. Who says it won't happen where you live? As the currencies become more leveraged and unstable, the governments that back them will try to keep the masses from fleeing the failing currency. Suppose you do not have a bank account in a foreign country, which is very easy and simple to set up, or a corporate bank account, such as a Belize bank account tied to a Belize LLC. In that case, you may find it difficult or impossible to transfer your life savings if things go wrong. Higher taxes are the natural step when your funds can no longer be transferred. Your money can lose its value overnight. Imagine waking up one morning to discover that you now have half your net worth from the previous day. This is essentially what happened to people in Argentina just one week ago when their currency's purchasing power fell by 30% overnight. Do you believe it can happen to you? Unfortunately, the general public has misplaced trust in the currency and banking system. It's easy to do when you have non-failing banking institutions and you're in the eye of the economic storm. However, the newly averted 2008 financial crisis was never cleaned up. It was simply swept under the rug, and major flaws in the system remain today. People who save and invest wisely are more likely to be financially successful in the long run. Governments are no exception. Did you know about these truths of the bank? 
Let us know in the comments below.